You're listening to The Wrestling Family Talk Show featuring Bryce, Ryder, Ashley, and Ron. Or what we're about to do right now is I'm going to rebook the Survivor Series of 1987. Survivor Series matches has always been one of my favorite pay-per-views or match type, any type of elimination tag involving four or five competitors on a team has always been one of my favorite matchups. And my favorite setup for a Survivor Series matchup would be three singles competitors and a tag team on each side. If we look at the 1987 Survivor Series, only one match fits that criteria and happens to be the ladies match that happened that night. Now, the Survivor Series has gone through a lot of changes throughout the years. It started out as five on five matchups and even had five tag teams versus five tag team matchups for the first two years. In 1989, it actually went to a four versus four, which continued throughout the, the years. Uh, but then they started in 91, adding singles matches to the Survivor Series, which I didn't really like at all. I just wanted my elimination matches. So today what we're going to look at is the 1987 Survivor Series. We're going to have it on TV. We're going to be watching along. And as we watch along, I'm going to try to rebook these matches to fit that criteria of the three singles competitors teaming up with a tag team. And we'll see how it goes. We're probably going to use, uh, and I, in fact, I know we're going to need to use wrestlers that were on the roster, but were not actually on the pay-per-view to make this work. So it's going to be fun. What I'm going to be utilizing is I'm going to be looking at and thinking back, actually, of what the feuds were heading into the Survivor Series. I'm also going to be looking at the foot, uh, future booking of WrestleMania in the actual first Royal Rumble in 1988. And we're talking about WrestleMania 4. So I'm going to see who were they kind of favoring, uh, who were they wanting to win. And I'm going to match, try my best to match these teams up to kind of fit into that flow. And we'll see what teams we end up with. I think it's going to be a fun thing to do. Uh, it's really for no other reason, just for pure enjoyment here. So I'm going to hit the play button. I got my wife, Ashley, and one of my sons, Bryce, here sitting with me. They may hop in here and there and say their piece, but we're going to watch along, see how the action goes. And as we do that, I'm going to kind of be explaining what's going on in my mind of who's going to be fighting who. So we're going to hit play for the 1987 Survivor Series. All right, so what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm actually going to write down what the matchups were so I kind of know what I'm dealing with. So the first matchup here has to be one of my favorite teams. It was a team led by Macho Man Randy Savage. It had Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Jake the Snake Roberts, Hatsaw Jim Duggan, and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And by the way, if you hear any coughing or hacking in the background, my dog is actually suffering from a uh, some sort of uh, respiratory infection. We do have her on medicine, but if you hear any weird honking sounds or hacking sounds, that is none of us. It is my dog. She's laying right by here, so I can keep an eye on her. Uh, just fair warning in case you heard that. But back to the matches. You got Macho Man's team that I stated. And he's going against the Honky Tonk Man's team. And the big thing with the feud there is Honky Tonk Man claimed to be the greatest intercontinental champion, and he disrespected former intercontinental champions along the way when he made that speech. And one in particular took exception to that, and that was the Macho Man Randy Savage. And in turn, during that process, the Macho Man was actually considered a bad guy. And during this feud, the fans started liking him. And he actually turned into a good guy. And if you notice, when the names I mentioned, such as Brutus Beefcake, Jake Roberts, Jim Duggan, and Ricky Steamboats, you're going to notice that all those competitors have feuded with the Macho Man and even some before this. So in particular, Ricky Steamboat, they had a hot and heavy feud earlier that year, and, and, it, and it culminated at WrestleMania three. And it's just really weird to see Ricky Steamboat just forgive Macho Man for crushing his larynx so quickly, only eight months later. So that's another thing I'm going to take into factor is, hey, you know, I'm going to keep it where you crushed my neck 
12 months ago, a year, you know, a year ago, I'm probably not going to team up with you anytime soon, if at all, ever. So I may take that into factor of who I'm going to team up with. So we look at Honky Tonk Man's team. He has Dangerous Danny Davis, the evil ref that actually helped Macho Man win his Intercontinental Championship in 1986 against uh, Tito Santana. And here he is on the opposite side. You have the King Harley Race. The outlaw Ron Bass, who I believe was just entering the WWE at this time period. He had probably been there a few months or so, if I can check back. And uh, the actual website that I'm using is uh, Soli's Vintage uh, website. Uh, from It was made by Gordon Soli or his family. And it has a lot of information on there with title histories and Matchups and rosters is what I'm really looking at. Who was on the roster at this time? And they're going to be accompanied, and they also had Hercules on the team. They're going to be accompanied with Bobby Heenan and Jimmy Hart. So it's going to be a great matchup. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start listing out these matchups. And uh, how I do the process is I'll write the, the wrestlers down, and then I'll kind of put the good guy on one side and the bad guy on the other side of who I think was feuding or who needs to feud. That way I can kind of keep them in order of who I'm going to match up with and whose team they're going to be on. So on this first matchup, I'm writing down all the team members. And as I do this, my wife may jump in here in case there's any dead space. If I'm sitting here just trying to think and or having a brain fart, she'll jump in and keep this, uh, keep this going here. We got an interview going on. Take a look at those characters right there. You got Honky Tonk Man and all, all his team. What are you thinking about this interview right here? Honky Tonk Man leading the charge, Ashley. I think it's pretty good. Very entertaining. I love the costumes, actually. It's very loud. Check out Hercules' face back there. Really got that intensity type look going on. And we're taking a look at uh, where Honky Tonk Man had pushed the uh, Miss Elizabeth down. And speaking of that, that was such a great um, moment because that actually started the Mega Powers, the, the collaboration that Hulk Hogan and Macho Man would come together. Uh, I remember as a kid, I saw that. I saw Miss Elizabeth run back after Honky Tonk Man and the Hart Foundation had attacked Macho Man, pushed Miss Elizabeth down. She ran in the back, and out came Hulk Hogan. I thought it was the greatest thing I ever saw. And uh, I believe the bad guys are making their way out to the ring right now. That looks like the match just started. I love how the fans back then are just so awesome. There's way more women in the crowd. Oh, here, here comes it's the King, king. It's king Harley Race coming out. Oh, I bet those chains were heavy on Hercules. Wow. All right, so my my first thought here is I'm going to keep Randy Savage and Honky Tonk Man on each side against each other. But what I am going to do is instead of the Hart Foundation being in that tag team match, obviously we're going to be taking all those tag teams and putting them in separate matches. In fact, I believe we're going to end up with five men tag matches. Like I said, the ladies match, I'm not even going to touch. That is That fits my criteria. It was perfectly matched up. Three a single ladies and a tag team of ladies on each side. The jumping bomb angels are really going to stand out, especially in 1987. If you go back and watch this, some of the moves they were pulling off were, were great. To today's standards, you'll be thinking, oh, that, that's not too impressive. But in 1987... Those ladies really put forward, forward an effort and really uh, made a name for themselves. I'm, I'm shocked that they, at least from, I'm sure they did well in, in Japan. But after this, I believe they won the ta tag titles at the Royal Rumble right after this. But then I, I don't think I heard uh, from them after that. They, I believe they beat the Glamour Girls for the tag titles who's the actual tag team on the opposite side of them. But back to this matchup, I'm keeping Randy Savage and Honky Tonk Man against each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the Hart Foundation on Honky Tonk Man's team 
because they are managed by Jimmy Hart, and they were the ones holding Macho Man when he got hit. Now, if I look at the tag teams here that I have at my – I'm looking at the Killer Bees. I'm looking at the Killer Bees to team up with Macho Man. And this is the reason I'm probably going to pick the Killer Bees to team up with Macho Man is we got other matches that we're going to be booking. And I'm thinking I want the Killer Bees against the Hart Foundation because when we get in there later, you also have Hulk Hogan's team going against Andre the Giant. And one thing I noticed is when Andre decided to attack Hulk Hogan in a, in an episode, the British Bulldogs came out to help him. And they got disposed of by Andre pretty quickly. So I think I'm leaning towards British Bulldogs joining Hulk Hogan's team. So that eliminates them. And when it comes to the fabulous Rujos, I don't feel like they would – Fit with Macho Man at this time. I don't think they had any history with them, so I'll hold off on them. I'm looking at Strike Force. Now you're thinking, oh, hey, they were the tag team champions at this time. But my thought process is you're going to have five matches. I wouldn't put my my a big star of Macho Man with the tag champions. I want to spread that out, so I'm going to have the tag champions be featured in a different match. And then my last tag team that that I could use is the young stallions. And they, as their name state, they were pretty young. They're not, they weren't a top tag team at this time. I don't think they ever were a top tag team, but I believe they had a nice showing at this pay-per-view. So I'm going to save them to kind of just be a team on another team of, of at the survivor series, maybe to help somebody else push forward. And then and, and the bad guy, area i'm looking at maybe matching them up with demolition right now so i'm going to pick the killer bees to go ahead and team up with macho man here which is jumping jim brunzel and b brian blair they're going to be on his team now we take a look at what other two singles would we add to this what i might need to do is start matching up those other matchups to kind of eliminate my options kind of like when you're taking a test and you got to eliminate a few of the options that you know are not going to work to kind of narrow down your answer. So I may do that. So as I stated earlier, I'm going to go ahead and throw Hulk Hogan down and I'm going to tentatively put the Bulldogs with him. And as I do that, I'm going to put Andre on the other side. And if we look at WrestleMania four, we know that the British Bulldogs, if my memory serves me correct, would end up feuding and fighting with the Islanders, the team of Tama and Haku. So, and it just so happens they are on the other side here. Uh, yes, the Islanders are there. So I'm going to say Andre teams with the Islanders. And the irony of that is that Haku would actually become Andre's teammate and they would win the tag titles in 1989. So right now we got Hulk Hogan and the Bulldogs and, Andre and the Islanders, so that eliminates the Bulldogs and the Islanders. It has Hulk Hogan and Andre in there, so they're not teaming up with Honky Tonk Man or Randy Savage. Uh, let's see here. We take a look at other teams. I know I want Strike Force to have their own team, so I'll throw Strike Force down here as another matchup. And uh, let's see here. I know Demolition. Demolition would take the tag titles from Strike Force, but at WrestleMania 4. But right now, I want both of those teams to look strong. So I'm not going to match them up here at the Survivor Series. What I'm going to do is you want to actually have a focus on them so that the matchup at WrestleMania is that much more interesting. So Demolition will be on their own team in a different matchup. It's really fun that it's breaking down here. And speaking of breaking down, we got Brutus Beefcake really taking it to Hercules right now and Danny Davis. He's a house of fire. The whole team's getting hip tosses. Uh, where are you thinking of the action right now compared to, the, to today's wrestling? Have you ever seen the Survivor Series 1987 action? I have not. She has not seen it. So 
You've been watching wrestling lately, lately, especially AEW. What what do you notice is the big difference from today's wrestling and the wrestling from over thirty years ago? Um, it seems I love how they really interact, especially with their teams. Uh, it's very, really dramatic, and I love that. <laughs> They're really putting in the work, that's for sure. Especially with the arm twist and really over exaggerating. Wow. Uh, that is one thing uh old school wrestling used to talk about to, to make it seem as it's a real competition that they would focus on a body part or in a tag match, they would isolate an opponent from their team and really focus on wearing them down to eliminate them. So a lot of what they call is ring psychology, telling a story and uh, being very dramatic. <clears throat> now back to my teams and what I'm thinking here right now. Oops, sorry. I elbowed you right now. I'm thinking uh, as I hear my dog really hacking it up here, she might be drowning me out. Well, she's just part of the action. You sure yeah. she's not getting in the yeah, ring? She may be. She may be getting excited here. All right. So what we're looking at? Who would be joining Randy Savage's team? Who's going to be joining Hulk Hogan's team? Strike Force's team and Demolition's team. Now I said we we're going to go with five matchups. So now we got to think about who is somebody else that we're going to focus on. And that person, I have two options right now. One of them was on Andre the Giant's team here at the Survivor Series 1987. That was Ravishing Rick Rude. And then one had not had a, I don't believe he had a match yet. And if he did, I don't believe it was anything special. But he was about to debut big time with a feud against Hulk Hogan. And that's the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. He's not on this show. And we know what the Million Dollar Man ended up doing. And I'm telling you, when I rebook this show, I'm putting Ted DiBiase, and I'm probably going to have him have his own team and have him be a team captain here. That'd be a great team. We'll see who's going to be joining him. But right now I'm writing Ted DiBiase down. And uh, a nice thing to do with a debuting competitor is to match him up with somebody that's Pretty popular, especially when dealing with Teddy Biasi being a bad guy. Somebody that's going to catapult him, which he didn't even need. He just went right for Hulk Hogan. It was a great storyline of him trying to buy the belt. But for the sake of just having fun and going back in time, you want somebody in there that's going to give him a nice competition and he's going to beat him. And then you're thinking, okay, this is a guy that has a shot against Hulk Hogan. As we're looking at Harley Race and Hacksaw Jim Duggan being counted out. And speaking of Hacksaw Jim Duggan, a very nice man. I had the pleasure of meeting him a few years ago and one of my heroes growing up, especially there in this time. And he was just a, just a down to earth guy. And we talked about everything. Of course we talked about wrestling, but everything else we talked about and he was, he's a great guy. And uh, one of the best days of my life, I'll tell you that meeting Hacksaw Jim Duggan. All right. So, we got Demolition. Now, I'm focusing on Demolition right now because it might be easier to match them up because they had a, a feud going on, believe it or not, with a tag team that was kind of two singles uh, competitors put together. One of them that is on Hulk Hogan's team, Ken Pac Terra, and one of them that's not even on the show, and I believe he might have been on his way out, which was Billy Jack Haynes. So their storyline was Demolition had beat up uh, a – enhancement talent called Brady Boone. And it just so happened that Brady Boone was Billy Jack Haynes's cousin. So Billy Jack Haynes took exception to it and got Ken Pack Terror to help him out. And uh, Demolition handled their business against them, but it was a feud that was going on, the Wrestling Challenge, some of their weekly shows. So I'm kind of looking at having Ken Pack Terry, Ken Pack Terra and Billy Jack Haynes on the other side against Demolition, but not as a tag team. Uh, they will be, be representing two of the three singles competitors there. So I will throw them in there. 
So against Demolition, we have Ken Pat Terra and Billy Jack Haynes. And then I'm adding the Young Stallions in there with Ken Pat Terra and Billy Jack Haynes with Demolition on the other side. What that team is missing is a leader. We'll see how we get to that leader here in a little bit. Let's see. Let's recap here. Randy Savage and the Killer Bees with Honky Tonk Man and Heart Foundation. Hulk Hogan Bulldogs against Andre and the Islanders. Strike Force, I just have them wrote down. They need a whole team. They need somebody to face. And then the last team I spoke about, Pat Tara Haynes and the Young Stallions and Demolition. Now, with Demolition, I'm looking at Billy Jack Haynes, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm just going to throw Hercules against him. They had a matchup and a feud hidden in the WrestleMania 3. And I noticed a lot of times, especially at this time in the WWE, as long as you had a feud with that person, it could have been two or three years later. When you matched up against them, it still made sense. You think, okay, these two individuals still do not like each other. It was a hot and heavy feud. So I'm throwing Hercules on Demolition's team. I'm going to check the roster on Soli's Vintage right now because there is a wrestler that I want to throw in there. Looking back, and at the time, I might have liked him. I can't remember. I, I, But when I watch him, he was pretty much Stone Cold Steve Austin before Stone Cold. And the wrestler I'm hoping is on this roster, and if not, I might cheat because I like him. I know he was at WrestleMania 4, and I'm talking about Bad News Brown. Bad News Brown was a guy that did not like anyone. He didn't like anyone. He wasn't loyal to anyone. He was his own person. He he had the dark trunks, the dark boots. What were you going to say, Bryce? He was solo. That's right. He was solo. He was a guy that did not need anyone. It does not look like he was on the roster here which is heartbreaking. I don't know if I should use him or not. I don't know when his talks with the WWE happened. Let's see when he entered. As long as it's within a few months, I may use him because I really liked him. I think he would fit in perfectly here. Let's see. Where are you at, Bad News? When did you come in? Oh, okay. He came in at February of 88. Oh, I don't know if I should use him or not. I don't. I feel like I would be cheating, but I mean, who's who's here to hold the rules against me? Nobody. You, you know, <laughs> I don't I don't know. I really want him on this team. Um, am, am I going to take it this serious, a fun thing like this? Am I just going to hold myself to certain standards? I don't know. Let's see here. Is there anybody else that would pique my interest? You know, I'm going to I'm going to change the history of time. And I'm going to say, Bad News Brown, you showed up a few months earlier. Because if I was WWE, I would be like, I'm not waiting for February. Yeah. I want you. And I'm going to throw Bad News Brown into this matchup. And the reason why I'm going to do that is on the other side is Ken Pat Terra. And at the 1988 SummerSlam, Ken Pat Terra fought Bad News Brown. And I think sprinkling that in. And at that time when I watched... Of course, I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. Like I was, I think I was like four at this time. So I'm not like, oh well, they shouldn't match them up. When I when I would rent the video years later, it just kind of seemed like a match that was just on there, just to have a match. I don't know. Maybe they had a feud or not, but uh, I'm gonna throw them in here because you sprinkle that in. You could think, okay, hey, they matched up against each other at the Survivor Series, so this kind of makes sense here in 1988 at the SummerSlam. One thing I do miss, I'm going to go off on a little tangent here that has nothing to do with this, but I miss when the wrestlers would be wrestling in the match and then that small square would pop up on the side and it would be a, an opponent of theirs going, you know, I see you out there beating that that scrub in the ring. <laughs> and let me tell you, in a few weeks, you're going to be matched up against me. And I'm going to be taking you on. I, I miss that. I miss that 
that square that would pop up and the wrestler would just be talking crap to the guy that's wrestling. And uh, I think I always saw bad news on there. He always had something to say. Spoke his mind. So bad news, Brown. You are on the demolition team because I think you are awesome. And you're going to match up against Pat Terra on that opposite side. I think I'll get away with it, putting him on that team. I don't see any rules official here to stop me. Uh, speaking of people that weren't not maybe even in WDB or on the roster here, some of the guys I may be pulling from. Uh, Coco Beware. I did not see him on the Survivor Series. I loved Coco. I don't know if he'll get on here or not because I feel like there's a lot more of the good guys that were not on here, such as Hillbilly Jim. Another good name, uh, George the Animal Steel. I'm looking... I don't think, I think Bob Orton had left. Uh, I know he wasn't a good guy, but yeah, Bob Orton had left. And that's when he was feuding. He had broke up with the team with Don Morocco. Don Morocco had just turned good to help out superstar Billy Graham. So, but those are just some of the guys I'm, I'm kind of thinking about. I don't know when they're going to pop in and if, if all, I'm just kind of looking at this right now. All right. so. With Strike Force, a team that came to mind to battle them, and that would be the new Dream Team. Let me take a look. I think the new Dream Team, which consisted of Greg the Hammer Valentine and Dino Bravo, I believe they are on the Survivor Series. Let's see. Where were they? I think they were in that tag team match. Yes, they were. So I'm going to throw them as the tag team that's going to oppose Strike Force. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't think they had any tag matches against each other. They, I mean, they could have. Everybody could have wrestled everybody. As many house shows that weren't on TV, I'm sure everybody wrestled somebody. But what I'm looking at there is bringing back that intercontinental feud that Tito had with Greg Valentine. Then you add Rick Martell who's Tito's partner in Dino Bravo. And I know they had a feud being top Canadians uh, when, when they wrestled throughout the years. So I think that's a perfect matchup of having the new dream team team, uh, team up to face strike force. So I'm putting the new dream team across from strike force. Let me make sure I'm going to book everybody that's been on this pay-per-view. So we'll take a look at the pay-per-view itself. I believe Jake the Snake just delivered his DDT on Danny Davis. And Hercules came in and blindsided him. Now, Jake the Snake. He was feuding against the Honky Tonk Man at WrestleMania 3 and leading up. That's why he was on Macho Man's team. It seemed like everybody that was on Macho Man's team at this pay-per-view had something to do with Honky Tonk, except for Hacksaw, who was there to face Harley Race. So I'm kind of debating, do I keep Jake the Snake on Randy Savage's team? Or do I foreshadow to his WrestleMania 4 opponent in the first round of the tournament, Ravishing Rick Rude? And where's Rude going to end up? So this is pretty exciting, because I'll be honest with you, I don't know. I'm doing this right off the fly. I had nothing pre-planned, so I'm as excited as I hopefully, whoever may be listening to this, is as excited as well. If this is even exciting, I don't know. Maybe my excitement's a little bit different. What do you think about my plan so far, Ashley, as I contemplate? I think it's pretty good. I like the, the setup and the expect, uh, explanations of everything. I like how the feuds are really exciting. I appreciate that. Now, my dilemma here. Who's going to be the man against Teddy Biasi? Who's the single competitor that's going to give him the competition and the validation to say, hey, you're the next guy that's going to be a main event player? You think Hulk Hogan should fight Teddy Biasi? Well, he will. That's the big feud that we're heading into. 
Now, should he fight him here at this Survivor Series is the question. I don't know, but you know what? That could be a great idea. You know, I could be thinking, hey, DiBiase is going to have his own team. And that was Bryce, by the way, giving me that that idea there. He's thinking, just have him fight Hulk Hogan. Tease it. I mean, it does make sense. Ted DiBiase used Andre the Giant to get that title. I mean, I could just sit there and put Rick Rude as the single competitor and have Jake the Snake against him as his own team and give Jake the Snake that that much power instead of just fitting him as a second fiddle on the team. And I think I might do that. I might take Bryce's idea here, and I am. I'm going to put a big change here. Ted DiBiase will be on Andre's team. And another thing I'm going to do after we we make these teams, I think we should go ahead and talk about the matchup and who would eliminate who and how it would be done. I think that would be exciting. But what we need to build the teams first. So we got Ted DiBiase. That's a great idea, Bryce. Love that idea. Putting them with the Islanders, putting them with Andre, already associating them with Hulk Hogan, saying, hey, I'm new. I got Andre on my side, and I'm coming after you, Hulk Hogan. And then because of Bryce's idea, I'm going to put Ravishing Rick Rude down here, having his own team. Again, like with Teddy Biasi, that may change. We're going off the fly here, and I'm going to oppose him with Jake the Snake. Now, I have Jake the Snake leading the team. Rick Rude's big feud at this time happened to be Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff because Rick Rude was brought in by Bobby Heenan to replace Mr. Wonderful because they said that he had a better body and a physique than Mr. Wonderful. We both know both of their characters was based off of looks and how much muscles they had. And that turned Paul Orndorff good. Now, the same thing when I talked about Ricky Steamboat teaming up with Macho Man, it kind of didn't make any sense based off of their feud and that they hated each other. Same thing with Paul Orndorff. Paul Orndorff had turned on Hulk Hogan. He was a bad guy to start out. Then after WrestleMania won, he turned against Roddy Piper and Bob Orton and joined Hulk Hogan. And then later on, he turned on Hulk Hogan. And now he's turned good again. Why would Hulk Hogan trust Mr. Wonderful? You already pile drove me. We just had a vicious cage match earlier in that year of 1987. Why am I having you on my team? In fact, if we look at Hulk Hogan's team, there's a lot of enemies. The only one that wasn't his enemy was Bam Bam Bigelow, and that was because he was new. But you had Ken Pat Terra. You had. Paul Orndorff and Don Morocco. Yeah, like all three of those guys could go um, by a Hulk Hogan and like turn on him. That's right. Like Bryce said all three of those guys could just turn on Hulk Hogan at any time. Yeah. And uh, that's why I don't think I'm going to put any of them on Hulk Hogan's team. Bryce may need to get closer to this microphone. He's having some great ideas over there. So let them know again why we're not going to put them on there. Because they can turn on Hulk Hogan. Because they can turn on Hulk Hogan? That's right. They could turn on him. I mean, Don Morocco held his arms against a turnbuckle as King Kong Bundy smashed his ribs leading into King Kong Bundy's matchup at, with Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania two. Paul Orndorff pile drove Hulk Hogan. And then Ken Patera, along with... Big John Studd, they feuded against Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. So I'm not trusting any of them. If I'm Hulk Hogan, mm -hmm. I mean, I might have Bam Bam on my team, but I'm not, I'm not going to trust the other three. So I'm going to keep them off. That's a great idea. So Paul Orndorff's going to go on Jake Roberts' team because he was feuding with Ravishing Rick Rude. So the only tag team left of the good guys is the Fabulous Rujos. And so they will also join Jake the Snake Roberts' team. And 
the only tag team left from the bad guys are the Bolsheviks, the the Russian team, or the Soviet Union team at that time. Boris Zukov and Nikolai Volkov. I'm going to put them on Rick Root's team. So what a change of course there. I didn't even see it coming. I was sitting there thinking, oh, Ted DiBiase has a team. Now, and now he's actually on Andre's team. Let's take a look at who else is listed. Now we have Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I'm thinking he's either going to go. He's got three options here. I think he has every option except for Randy Savage's team. Now he did fight Rick Rude at the Royal Rumble of 1988. So he might be a good addition to Jake the Snake Roberts' team. He also may be a great matchup for Ted DiBiase being on Andre's team. So I'm going to keep that, that door open for him until we eliminate a few more people here. So look around. I'm seeing Don Morocco. I'm seeing Ken Pat Terra. That we, are, we already have Ken Pat Terra. Don Morocco. Now his feud, we know we're not putting him on Hulk Hogan's team because he could turn on him. But his feud was with the one-man gang and Ken Pat, uh, no, I'm sorry, one-man gang and Butch Reed, who, and as we look at Honky Tonk Man being counted out, the match is over. Jake the Stank, Macho Man, and Ricky Steamboat have survived. They have won the matchup. So back to Don Morocco. Leading into the Survivor Series, superstar Billy Graham was uh, jumped and beaten down by Hexall Butch Reed or actually the natural books read in the one-man gang. And so Don Morocco came to his aid, turned good, and that was his feud. So wherever Don Morocco is going to end up, we're going to need Butch Reed and the one-man gang against him. So I am going to put them on Rick Rude's team. I'm going to say the one-man gang and Butch Reed are going to team up with the Bolsheviks and Rick Rude, and, and it fits perfectly because the Bolsheviks, they're managed by Slick. One-man gang, Butch Reed managed by Slick. Rick Rude, he's, he's managed by Bobby Heenan, but as we see, they loved having multiple managers out there to distract, so Bobby Heenan and Slick will team up on this one to manage and to finish off Jake the Snake Roberts' team is Don Morocco. So we have our first team finalized, unless something changes. I'll take a look at that awesome tag team, Bryce. Andre the Giants' team. This is the, the real team he had. King Kong Bundy, One Man Gang, Ravishing Rick Rude, and Hacksaw Butch Reed, or the Natural Butch Reed. All those guys are like big boys. They're they are. Big. They are big boys. They are, they're huge. Yeah, and you know what? Going into that, I don't think anyone could think Hulk Hogan's team is going to beat them. Well, if they yeah. had like Hulk Hogan, Sting, Lex Luthor, and like yeah. Macho Man. Yeah, if they had that team, if they had Hulk Hogan, he said Sting, Lex Luger, yeah, yeah and yeah. the Macho Man team, though, yeah, uh, that would probably be the team you would need to beat them. But it just so happens at this time, Hulk Hogan doesn't have those teammates. Nope. So, but our first team, our matchup that's finished is Jake the Snake Roberts. He teams with Paul Orndorff and Don Morocco and also the Fabulous Rujos against Rick Root's team of the One Man Gang, Butch Reed, and the Bolsheviks. So one team down, Bryce. Let's see what else we can do here. I know I'm going to... Survive King B Kong Bundy jumping on them. Yeah, when he hits the avalanche, no one survives King Kong Bundy. Only if you dodge it and do like an oboe drop to the back. Or like a, do a submission hold. Yeah. You could elbow him right in the back, put lock in a hold. Yeah. He's slow. He's slow, so you getting out of the way is what you need to do. That's your only... I could push him into Andre the Giant. Yeah, cause some confusion there. Throw him right into Andre. They hit heads. 
you roll them right up, roll those big shoulders up, that could happen. All right, so Bam Bam Bigelow. I'm going to throw him in there. I'm going to keep him on Hulk Hogan's team. And Bam Bam Bigelow's going to be the catalyst. If that's even the correct word, it just sounds good. Bam Bam Bigelow is still pretty big. He's yes. He's like the size of um, King Kong Bundy. That's right. He's going to be the antagonist. Look at these words I'm throwing out. I don't even I don't even know what they mean. I'll be honest with you. To Ted DiBiase, we'll just say his opposite on the team, Bam Bam Bigelow, is joining Hulk Hogan's team. Well, not really joining. He's staying with the team. And you know what? I'm going to throw King Kong Bundy on Andre's team to finish it off, and I'm going to bring in a man that was not on this pay-per-view I'm going to check the roster, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care when he left, if he's on the roster or not. He is on the roster, so it does count. Here's the five. He is none other. Here's the girls' match. Here is the girls' match. But the guy I'm talking about, Bryce, that I'm going to bring in, the Junkyard Dog. I'm going to bring the Junkyard Dog in, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time he's top five maybe even top three of my favorite wrestlers and we'll probably end up doing that ashley we'll probably do a list of all of our favorite wrestlers of all time i'm giving a little preview there look out for the junkyard dog on my list and look out for him on hulk hogan's matches, team we can have we can uh, have the hall of famers on our wrestling matches that's right we could copy some matches and stuff we could. We could do different matches with your action figures mm-hmm. and uh, doing some great matchups. But Hulk Hogan's team's done right now. So far, uh, Hulk Hogan's teaming up with Bam Bam Bigelow, with the Junkyard Dog, and with the British Bulldogs. And they will fight Andre the Giant's team of Ted DiBiase, King Kong Bundy, and the Islanders. I think that's a pretty good looking matchup there. Yeah. So what's on the good guys team again? Who's on the good guys team? It's Hulk Hogan, Junkyard Dog, Bam Bam Bigelow, and the British Bulldogs. You like that team? Yeah. Yeah, you like them? Good. Because you got the British Bulldog on it. Yep, the British Bulldog. That that's Davy Boy Smith and the Dynamite Kid. Ooh. Dynamite Kid was one of the best wrestlers. Of all time. I like Davy Boy Smith. Davy Boy Smith eliminated Teddy DiBiase in the 1992 Royal Rumble. Yeah, so a few years down the line, the British Bulldog had a little history there with Teddy DiBiase. That's a mm-hmm. good point. Right, we're looking at our teams here. Uh, one thing I noticed, or a couple things I noticed, is uh, some bad guys, I might add. We have Kamala. He's available in a Sika, one of the Samoans that I could put on this team because we are needing some bad guys. All right. I would pick Sika. Yeah. All right. So we're looking at who's going to lead that team against Demolition's team. And I'm thinking I'm going to put Axel Jim Duggan. He's going to be leading his team. And I'm going to put Harley Race on the opposite side. That's going to finish off their two teams. So we have Axel Jim Duggan. I forgot the, let's see here. We got the action. We got the ladies match going on right now. This is the match I was talking about with the jumping bomb angels. When they get in there doing some great moves. So, But back to this, uh, Jim Duggan, Ken Pactera, Billy Jack Haynes, and the Young Stallions are battling... Harley Race's team of Hercules, Bad News Brown, and Demolition. So we have two teams left. Randy Savage, Honky Tonk Man's battle, and then Strike Force's battle with the new Dream Team. So that pretty much tells me that Ricky Steamboat's going to be on Strike Force's team because I'm not wanting him on 
Macho Man's team right now. So I'm going to throw Ricky Steamboat to team up with Strike Force. So I know that's going to happen. Now I have to look at who's all available that's left for me. We have Dangerous Danny Davis. Now he is part of the Hart Foundation, so he makes sense to be on Honky, Man, uh, Honky Tonk Man's team. So I'm putting Danny Davis in there. We have an elimination in the ladies' match. Looks like the good, the good side is uh, having the upper hand here. It's a five on three now, and here comes the jumping bomb angels. This is when the match picks up. They're going to do some outstanding moves. We also have Outlaw Ron Bass sitting out there. I know I'm going to need Sika. I know I'm going to need Kamala. Yeah, so I'm going to need Sika and Kamala, and I'm going to put them with the uh, new Dream Team. So I need a leader for the new Dream Team's side, and I need some more bodies to put on the side for Strike Force. There they are. They're the ones in the ring right now. They made the tag. Exciting Ash and bringing Sensational Sherry in. Really doing a number on her. Now back to our matchups. I haven't heard from you in a while, Ashley. What do you got going on over there? Not much. Just uh, really enjoying this women's match. Like, all the acrobatic that's going on is pretty cool. I love the costumes. They're really taking it out on Sensational Sherry, right? Mm -hmm. And so we got, got the action going on right now. I'm trying to finish up these tag matches. And, and we can use these um, tag team matches for our character. Um, wrestling figures, too. Yeah, we may have these uh, action figures. We don't have Bad there. News Brown, though. Yeah, we'll have to figure that out. So yeah. Back to this matchup. Hopefully they make a Bad News Brown yeah. action figure at some point in time. Uh, with the newer thing. I believe they made one with the old company that WWE had, the Jack Pacific. I believe they've made one there. All right, so I'm thinking the teams here. We got Seek and Kamala with the new Dream Team, Ricky Steamboat and Strike Force. Who do I have left on the good guy side that's available? The one of the good guys got eliminated. All right, sensational. Yes, yeah, sensational. Sherry eliminated one of the good guys. Right now I'm kind of stumped. I'm stumped on who I'm putting in. This is where I'm going to have to reach into the bag of tricks here and try to find people that were not on the actual pay-per-view. All right, so we do have one left that was on the pay-per-view, and that's going to be Outlaw Ron Bass. And I'm going to have him finish off Hockey Man. Honky Tonk Man's team, and which means I'm going to put Brutus Beefcake on Macho Man's team because him and the Outlaw are going to be set up for a feud in 1988. We're missing one person from that, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab Coco Beware. I'm going to throw him into that team. I think he's a great matchup for Danny Davis. So that finishes those two teams off. We got Macho Man Randy Savage, Coco Beware, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, teaming up with the Killer Bees. And it's the Honky Tonk Man, Danny Davis, Ron Bass, and the Hart Foundation. So Honky Tonk Man pretty much grabbing two individuals that were already on his team and adding that Hart Foundation. Randy Savage, the only person that was on his team at the 87 Survivor Series that's on here now is Brutus the Barber Beefcake. And that leaves us with the new Dream Team and Strike Forces team. So I got to look, see if I'm missing anyone. 
Let me go back to Survivor Series 87. I'm not seeing anyone that's available. Jake Roberts is gone. Jim Duggan's gone. Ricky Steamboat has been assigned to the team. So now I need to go back to the roster, find anyone that was not with them. And what I will do, we're looking at the names. Does anyone stand out? Right, and Kamala was not actually with the company at this time. But since I do not see anyone that is worthy, I will have him on the team. Just as if we had kept him. I believe he left in around August. So a few months prior to this, we'll say they keep Kamala. Again, he's with the new Dream Team. And then I noticed Killer Khan. So this is a... A massive team the new Dream Team has with them, led by Greg Valentine. He's got Dino Bravo, which is his partner. Sika, Kamala, and Killer Khan. What a great savagely type of a team there. On the opposite side, you got Strike Force. You got Ricky Steamboat. And I just noticed this is a big time thing. The Ultimate Warrior was on the roster at this time. Just starting out. They need a big person. They need a big man on their team, and I'm going to throw them on the team. So you're looking at Strike Force Ricky Steamboat in a young, fresh, ultimate warrior. And the last person might not match up, but I really don't know if he would fit in with any team because he was so unique. We're looking at Hillbilly Jim. You put him on any team, yeah, he's going to stand out. He doesn't blend in, but that's what made him unique. And you need that big body. You got Strike Force, some high flyers, Ricky Steamboat. They got the quickness, but with Ultimate Warrior and Hillbilly Jim, that's going to counter the big bodies of Kamala, Killer Khan, Asika. That's a pretty good matchup. Yeah, I'm, I would look forward to that matchup. So Hillbilly Jim finishes it off. We're going to recap really quickly here. The actual matches. And then at some point, we'll go ahead and go through the matches here and uh, see how the match would go, what we would think would happen, who would get eliminated, which is going to be great, great and fun. So, first matchup Randy Savage with the Killer Bees and Coco Beware and Bruce the Barber Beefcake against the Honky Tonk Man, the Heart Foundation. Dangerous Danny Davis, and the outlaw Ron Bass. You have Hulk Hogan teaming up with the British Bulldogs, Bam Bam Bigelow, the Junkyard Dog going against Andre the Giant, the Islanders, Ted DiBiase, and King Kong Bundy. And as I look at that, we can all think back to the Mid-South region where Junkyard Dog and Ted DiBiase really went at it. So you add that in with the two big new bodies there of Bam Bam Bigelow battling out with a big body such as King Kong Bundy, this is a perfect matchup. Strike Force leads their team of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, a young Ultimate Warrior in Hillbilly Jim, against the new Dream Team, which is Greg the Hammer Valentine and Dino Bravo, along with Sika, Kamala, and Killer Khan. What a scary team that is. Hacksaw Jim Duggan leads his team of Ken Pat Terra, Billy Jack Haynes and the Young Stallions against Harley Race, Demolition, Hercules, and Bad News Brown. And last but not least, Jake the Snake Roberts, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, the fabulous Rujo Brothers, and Don Morocco battle it out with Ravishing Rick Rude, the Bolsheviks, the One Man Gang, and the natural Butch Reed. I did not expect these teams to be the way they were. I didn't really know what to expect, but I like it. I think that's pretty good because I like it. That'd be a hard thing because I'd be wanting someone on each team to win. Yeah, so that's the dilemma. So if we start off on who would win and how would they get eliminated, who they'd be eliminated by, start off with Randy Savage's matchup. In the real match, 
Randy Savage's team kind of ran through Honky Tonk Man's team. There was three survivors in it, so I don't think anything changes here with with my new teams. What I would do is obviously you want Honky Tonk Man the last to the end. You want the Heart Foundation to last pretty long, long because you want Macho Man to get that revenge on him. And then you have Dangerous Danny Davis and Outlaw Ron Bastard there. They complete the team, but they would probably be eliminated early on. So I guess I would think with Coco Beware, I believe at this time, he's the one that came out with that song, the Pile Driver song. They were getting behind him. I'm kind of shocked he wasn't on the pay-per-view. I couldn't believe they couldn't find a place for him. But uh, And Danny, Danny Davis was really never a threat. I think uh, Coco Beware hits the Ghostbuster Brain Buster on Danny Davis for the first victory. Eliminates Danny Davis that way. That way, because Coco's going to not last to the end because they don't want their whole team to last. But you don't want him to look bad. So I probably would have Coco get that win over Danny Davis. Maybe have the outlaw Ron Bass. He's new. Maybe he eliminates Coco. Then you set up Brutus Beefcake eliminating Ron Bass. I had the Heart Foundation. They would eliminate both Killer Beasts. That way it's down to Honky Tonk Man Heart Foundation against Randy Savage and Brutus the Barber Beefcake. I think through twists and turns and knockdowns and such, you have maybe Macho Man elim eliminates Jim Neidhart. Honky Tonk Man. I would think, I was going to say he was going to eliminate Brutus the Barber Beefcake, but I don't think I would want that because Brutus, I believe, would challenge Honky Tonk Man at WrestleMania 4 for the title. So you don't want that. I may just have Randy Savage and Bruce the Barber Beefcake eliminate the Hart Foundation. And then, of course, Honky Tonk Man would run off at the end and not actually lose. That way you keep him looking pretty good and set up matches with him and Macho Man in the future or with Brutus Beefcake. But either way, the main thing is it's going to come down to Hart Foundation and Honky Tonk Man. It'll come down to Randy Savage and Bruce the Barber Beefcake. And I could see Savage and Beefcake toughing it out, leaving, looking victorious. On the next match, again, this is a no, well, I guess I should go in order of how I would want the matches to go. So you kick it off with Randy Savage like they did here. Uh, they followed it up with the ladies match. Maybe you follow it up here with that ladies match. Have the jumping bomb angels look really good and strong in it. Don't change a thing on the ladies match. It was perfect. It was an enjoy, enjoyment to to watch and right now we're watching five tag teams it's 10 10 guys you got how many managers are there four or five managers out there a lot of people in this in this interview going crazy demolition the islanders art foundation all going crazy it's leading to the uh 10 on 10 matchup the only thing is i believe if a tag team member is eliminated both members of the team are gone so it's not like you have to eliminate 10 People, you would only have to eliminate five, and their teammate would go along with them. So following it up, I would probably go with the Jim Duggan matchup. His seems to be at a nice spot right there. And this one's going to really push demolition on the other side. So again, to reiterate, we got Jim Duggan, Ken Pack, Tara, Billy Jack Haynes, and the Young Stallions against Harley Race, Hercules, Bad News Brown, and Demolition. Here we know we want we want demolition to look great in this matchup. So the thing is about this is the reason I put Bad News Brown in there. He wasn't in the Federation at this time, but if we all know, if we look at Survivor Series '88 and '89, I believe in both of those events he left his team high and dry. There was a miscommunication. He got hit. So I would play into that factor right away. I wouldn't break the streak, even though the streak hadn't happened. It would start here. So what I would do, you got Ken Pack, Tara, Billy Jack Haynes. They weren't really, I think Billy Jack Haynes was going to be leaving the WWE at this time, and they never really pushed Ken Pack, Tara when he turned good. He never seemed to be a main focus for him. So what I would do is I would have 
maybe Hercules defeat Billy Jack Haynes, maybe have Bad News Brown hold Billy Jack Haynes, and Hercules hits Billy Jack Haynes, and there's a great teamwork between them two, and somehow he eliminates Billy Jack Haynes. Hercules continues on. Bad News Brown gets into the ring. He's in there with Ken Pat Tara. And uh, what you have is he goes and holds Ken Pat Tara and Bad News Brown and Hercules, even though it had worked prior. Maybe there was a mistake. Maybe Hercules hits Bad News at the same time. Maybe Ken Pat Tara tags out the hacksaw. As there's an argument between Hercules and Bad News Brown, Bad News Brown says, I'm leaving. Leaves along the way. Hacksaw hits him, hits Hercules with a clothesline, pins him. Hercules is eliminated. Harley Race is out there arguing with Bad News, trying to get him back together. You have Hacksaw slide out of the ring, battle Harley Race, do their count out like they did here on this pay per view. So then you eliminate a big portion of the matchup because now I have added two to three extra matches here on the pay-per-view. So time is going to be of the essence. So this may be a quick matchup where by the time you blink, Jim Duggan, Billy Jack Haynes, Hercules and Bad News Brown, Harley Race, they're all out. And that's when you leave Demolition there. Demolition's against Ken Pack, Tara, and the Young Stallions, and they just go to work. And they come out victorious. They... They defeat the Young Stallions. They eliminate Ken Pat Tara. And they're the sole survivors of demolition. So that's really going to put them over as they were down 3-2. to two, And they're just a tough team. Have that momentum hidden into WrestleMania 4. Your next matchup. I probably put the tag team champions in this one. The Strike Force team. It's right in the center. Break up my top matchups and I have strike force, Ricky steamboat, ultimate warrior, hillbilly Jim against the new dream team, Sika, Kamala and killer Khan. This one, you're wanting strike force to look good. You're wanting Ricky steamboat to look good. And probably ultimate warrior. I wouldn't be surprised if I was doing this. Would I have all members, including hillbilly Jim survive? Or would I have hillbilly Jim be the one guy that gets eliminated from the good guys? That way you never have that whole team win. So you might have the bad guy team come out hot and heavy and have Kamala or Sika, who's staying with the company, or Killer Khan eliminate him, Illy Jim, and it's five on four. And then the good guys just systematically defeat the five on four disadvantage, make them all look strong. Ultimate Warrior eliminating somebody. Ricky Steamboat eliminates somebody. Have Strike Force look very good using their teamwork. So I could see Strike Force, Ricky Steamboat, and Ultimate Warriors surviving on this one. Uh, heading in. Even though Ricky Steamboat, I mean, after he won the Intercontinental title, he dropped the title to Honky Tonk Man shortly thereafter. And after that, he really never got that top, top guy feel. And then he was out of the company after WrestleMania 4. And what ties it together, his opponent at WrestleMania 4 in the first round, I believe, was Greg the Hammer Valentine, who's he, who he is opposing here. So that works as well. Our next matchup, Jake Roberts, Paul Orndorff, Don Morocco, and the Fabulous Rujos against Rick Rude, the Bolsheviks, One Man Gang, and Butch Reed. This matchup's going to go to the, ba to the bad guys. Rick Rude's just debuting. I see him going over Paul Orndorff. I... I can't remember if he eliminated him in this in the real matchup or not. I think he might have. The Bolsheviks would not survive. They would be eliminated. It may just be a Rick Rude is the sole survivor. You have Jake Jake Roberts hitting DDTs on people. He would be looking fabulous. And then maybe at the end they do they kind of do what they did when he was down in 1988, when he was against Rick Rude, Andre the Giant. It was like a three-on-one. He eliminated, I think he hit Rick Rude with the DDT. Andre came in and choked him. 
and just left him laying there for, for his teammate to cover. You may see that here where Jake Roberts' team completely gets eliminated. It's maybe down to Rick Rude, One Man Gang, and Butch Reed. He hits a DDT on Butch Reed, eliminates him, but One Man Gang comes in, keeps just splashing him, gets disqualified. Rick Rude comes in, just hits that Rude Awakening, and he's the sole survivor. That way Jake Roberts looks like a really good guy, and Rick Rude also looks pretty good heading into their matchup at WrestleMania 4. And, of course, the main event. We all know Andre's team ended up pulling it out and winning. I don't see it going any different here. The only thing is I think Ted DiBiase is going to survive with them. You have the Islanders there. The Islanders will look good against the Bulldogs. But I think Andre would probably get a lot of the eliminations here for his team. And Hulk Hogan would get a lot of his eliminations for his team. And they just keep whittling it down where it's down to maybe. I know it was down to Andre and Bam Bam Bigelow on here. Maybe they do the same thing where Hulk Hogan's outside gets counted out with King Kong Bundy. And then it's just down to Andre and Bam Bam Bigelow. I don't see much of a change. Uh, I would have loved to see the Junkyard Dog have more time in there, but I don't think they would do that. I think he might be eliminated by Ted DiBiase. Maybe the first elimination for the good guy team. And then uh, maybe the Bulldogs and the Islanders split eliminations. Maybe there's one Bulldog, one Islander left. And Hulk Hogan cleans that up on the, his side, and Andre cleans it up on, on the other side, leading to Hulk Hogan, King Kong Bundy going to the outside. And then that leaves DiBiase and Andre against Bam Bam. And then they take it. But this has been pretty fun. That'd be just a really good match if you watch. Yeah, I mean, I hope, that would have been fun. I hope. I mean, it's easy to look back and and think of these matchups. Like I said, this is just for fun. I didn't know how it was going to end up doing. I always did this, just doodling around. And I thought, why don't I give it a shot? Maybe talk it out. This is the first time I've ever talked it out. Think as I do it of what I'm actually thinking. Hopefully, it was interesting. That would have been a great show to have gone to. What do you think? Even today. Yeah, that would have been amazing. Yeah, if uh, we were older back then, adults, I mean, it would have been a great time to watch wrestling. It's starting to pick back up now with AEW, getting back into the wrestling there. Uh, just kind of has, even though the actual in-ring style is different, the storyline seemed to fall in line with the old traditional way of doing it. Yeah. Uh, that's what's always interested me about wrestling, mainly is the storylines. Having a great storyline can really counter what you're seeing in the ring, making it mean more. But, yeah, it's yeah. really making me get back into it. Well, good. Well, hopefully this works out and we have some listeners. And if anybody wants to comment what their teams would be, what they liked or disliked on my teams. Always up for debate, and that's the fun thing about pro wrestling. Everybody has ideas of what should happen, what could happen, what should have gone down, and it's always nice to talk about. It's always fun to talk about, and then looking forward to the future of what could be happening. All the big news from AEW, all the new wrestlers possibly coming in. So it should be fun to try to guess what's going to happen. Thank you all for listening. Thank and you, guys. We'll see you next time.